Well, greetings, everyone, and I want to welcome everybody back to God's Unchanging Word and this week's edition of News Nuggets and Insights. It's Friday, December 9th. First off, let me share with you some exciting news and welcome a new member uh, to the family of Associated Churches. This is for the Church of God, Kawatha Lakes, Ontario. So we had been in communication with them uh, for the last couple weeks. And if you're interested or you live in that area, near, a, I'm going to bring a map up in just a second. I've got some contact information here by, by Mr. Stephen Wilshaw. And when we began to communicate and he sent his email, I loved their email address. And I think you will too. It's called You Matter. And uh, what a welcoming addition. You matter for anyone who's in that area and like to attend churches. You matter at the C O G E C O dot C A. So I've got here a couple, uh, just a couple of uh, graphics that's on our website. So that if you're interested, Bob Bourne, who handles the field churches for us and putting all that information on, that you can actually go here. So what I'm going to do now, and just because we haven't done this before, and this is our first time being able to introduce to you the associate churches or any other church. Because we spoke to quite a number of people at the Feast of Tabernacles this year. As I traveled from site to site, people had showed interest and said, I'd like to be a part of the, the COGMI in various forms, either as an associate or a church. And I wanted to show you what we have. So I'm going to back out of here for just a second. And then I'm going to go to our website. So we have our website up here. And on the website, I'm on the main page. And it's the COGMI.org. So now if you go to the COGMI.org and you hit the little tab in the middle of the page here, it says home, and you drop down a tab, you'll see congregations. Just click on that. And what it does is it takes you to a list of the churches where we have uh, uh, scattered around the country. And actually we're getting now around the globe in, internationally. So you come down, you scroll down for the churches. You'll see that we have, we get to a page that says associated fellowship groups right there in, on the page. And then we have the cities and the locations. And you can actually click on each one of those boxes uh, where you see a city. And it'll take you to a web page or an email address for the person who's in charge for that and get specific information about those churches in case you're interested. So I'll scale, scale down a little bit further. And so what we've done now is we've included now an international ministry partners. So people who are outside the United States, we put on there in British Columbia, uh, Vancouver, British, British Columbia, Ontario. So we have here Kawatha Lakes, and I don't think we have a web page for them yet that goes to a, a website for them directly, but we will soon we'll hopefully help them out. So great group of people. They, they actually meet in two different places during the course of the month. So if you're in the area, you know that area better than I do if you're in that area, by all, by all means, send them an email, get the information, and I'm sure they would love to have you visit with them. So each week we're going to try to bring a little more information about the web page to help you navigate around that. So now let's get back to the news nuggets and insights for today. Because i got a lot of information I want to bring to you, which is very, very important. In recent days now, we began to hear about the federal deficit in America. What's really interesting was, I thought about this, we haven't heard much about the problems with the finances in America. In fact, for the last few years, we literally have been lied to by the news media. People telling us how great the country's doing, how well we're doing. The president taking a grandstand tour around the world telling us how well the economy is. And the truth is, it's not. And it hasn't been in a long, long time. And it's very critical. Right, right now, we're at the stages of being extremely critical. We are now at the point of just getting to the point of $20 trillion in debt. That means that the debt in the last eight years has just nearly doubled and has been more than all the presidents combined put together. We actually did a series on this, uh, covering some of the financial picture of America and talking about how bad it is in America in decline. Now, if you go to our website, you can actually find that series online. It's called America in Decline. And I encourage everyone to go take a look at that series. It's four parts. 
four hours of information covering various aspects of the U.S. economy and why we're in decline. Now, I'm bringing that out to you now for a very important reason. is because now, as this administration of the Obama uh, administration moves out and the Trump administration moves in, the media, who's never been favorable in, in my lifetime that I can remember, toward the conservative movement or to Christians, are now going to begin to bring out all the information that they have hidden from the public over the last six to eight years. And so you're going to begin to see all of a sudden the rise of, of the scare tactics that they'll use, which are literally concerning not just the United States, but the globe. So I'm going to take one aspect of it today to tell you why we are in such a problem and why the present condition cannot be overcome unless we make radical changes to return this nation back to God. And, and I don't care who says they can do what. They can make a dent, but they cannot recover from the problem we're in. And I'm going to show you why today. So now, the U.S. debt clock, December 9, 2016. This is actually being taped for December 9th. So I actually had to take this picture that you're looking at on the screen or behind me on the television a few days earlier. So I noticed that uh, when I began to tape this, let me, let me show you. This upper right-hand corner is showing the national debt of where it stands when I actually clicked that picture on it uh, uh, just yesterday. When I looked at it today, that debt had risen from $19,930,000,000,000 that it went to $932,000,000,000. In other words, from the yesterday afternoon when I took this shot till today, we had already risen another $2 billion in debt overnight. Now, when you see this on Friday, and if you go to the U.S. debt clock and get real time, you will see how much has increased from the time we did this today, which was on a Tuesday of this week, just to give you an idea how fast the debt is going up. So now I'm going to show you one more thing. We're going to move on. And I'm going to come back to this page in just a second. Today, I want to focus on this quadrant of the debt clock page. And the reason is I'm going to show you why we can't get out of the debt problem that we're in today. And it it's basically goes back to a biblical principle that this nation has just obliviated and thrown out the window and, and through the disobedience to God showing the issues today that America is facing, why we cannot get out of the problems that we're in unless this nation comes to repentance. So now let me move on. I'm going to show you why. This page is showing us the Congressional Office, their budget for the 2016 fiscal year. The budget was, they added $590 billion to the national debt. In just one year, they added $590 billion to one debt. Two billion since yesterday. They spent $3.3 trillion of the tax money that they took in. They only took in... $3.3 trillion, but they spent $3.9 trillion, which added the $590. So now let me show you how this breaks down to give you an idea why we can't get out of the mess that we're in. Of the money that they spent, $1.1 trillion, right, let me repeat that, $1.1 trillion was spent on health care. Another $900 billion, just, one, just $100 million short, $100 billion short of another trillion dollars on Social Security and disability insurance. Again, facing the issues of health. They spent $580 billion on defense. Can you imagine that? Just to defend our nation, $580 billion. And last, they spent $1 trillion on everything else. So everything else that the government spends, uh, running the, the offices, paying for the government employees, uh, everything that goes into road, infrastructure, schools, and everything, $1 trillion. So now we're spending $3.9 trillion. A um, trillion of it goes into running the country and $580 billion. So let me give you the breakdown. Of every dollar that, that's spent, 28% of it is spent on health care. In America, 28% is on health care. 
When you add the Social Security and disability, the insurance, to that health care, you spend another $900 billion or literally 50% of every dollar is spent on health care and disability. So half of everything the nation spends is on health. Is, now try to, try to imagine that. Is on health. Supposedly, we're the healthiest nation in the world. But yet, nearly... 50% of every dollar we spent is supposedly going toward health care. So that means that the budget is, is consuming 50% of every dollar they collect. And we can't collect enough to run the country and take care of health care. So let me break this down a little bit to show you what has happened now with the rising cost of health care. And then we're going to come into the Bible and show you that the reason we're in this is through the disobedience to God's laws. Now, I've got two, two charts up here, and I'm going to bring one up in just a second. The, last, the left chart is showing us the national health care per capita since 1960 to 2010. Now, it's going up even a lot higher since 2010 with the Obamacare. On the right, showing you the national health expenditures and their share of gross domestic product. So we're seeing this huge rise in cost per person for health care and the cost against the national gross domestic product. So you're seeing it's consuming us. Our own health issues in our nation are consuming us to the point that we can't unbury ourselves. Now I want to zoom into that left chart and, and I'm going to walk over to the chart so if you can walk with me here. All right, so now let me just show you this. In 1960, before we had government health care come in, the average cost per person in the United States was just $147 a year. Now, by 1965, President Johnson began to bring in government support toward health issues and helping the poor. By the end of the 60s, from 1970, it grew to $356 a person, which is manageable, which is manageable. But when we see by 1980, 10 years later, it had tripled. And then you go into, by 1990, it almost triples again. And then it just skyrockets. Where it was by 2010, all right, so 2010, it was $8,400 a person for health care. Can you imagine that? Now, I have no idea what it is today, but it's a lot higher than this. And there's no end in sight. So here's our problem. While our health issues continue to rise exorbitantly, even to the point that our gross domestic product cannot keep pace with the health issues. All right, so I'm going to go back to the chart in just a minute. One last thing. The rising cost of health care with people in chronic conditions. I brought this chart in. If, so if you're watching this on the Internet, you can freeze this page. And so you will see that chronic conditions which by the Bible basically talks about through the blessings and cursings chapter of Deuteronomy 28, which I'm going to go to in just a moment, shows that the, that the chronic condition of illnesses on the American people has been rising steadily, and there's no end in sight. That quite possibly almost 50% of the American people will have chronic conditions by the year 2030. Can you imagine that? The nation with the greatest abundance of any people on the face of the earth, by the time 2030, they're telling us that nearly half of our nation are going to need to be facing chronic health conditions. In addition to that, we're talking about chronic mental health conditions. God tells us about these conditions in his chapters on blessings and cursings in Deuteronomy 28. Now, I've opened the Bible here just to show you just a couple of things. At the beginning of this chapter, from verses 1 through chapter, verses 14, God says, if you do this, if we keep his own laws we, and obey him, we will be blessed. And you can go through these, this, this verse by verse, and it says, well, I'll pick it up in verse 3. Blessed shall you be in the city. Blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body and the fruit of the ground, and the fruit of the cattle. In other words, everything we touch will be turning into blessings. There was a time in America that we enjoyed those blessings. Something happened in the 60s that changed everything. 
and you began to see the health of a nation began to deteriorate over the last 40 and 50 years. And it goes on, it says, blessed shall you be when you come in, blessed shall be when you go out. And God says in verse 9, and he will establish you to be a holy people unto himself. So those are all the blessings, and you can read them from verses 1 through 14. However, in verse 15, things begin to change. So now, let me read what God says with just a few of the warnings of the curses that will come that if you don't obey God. And all I'm basically going to bring out today are issues that concern health. Now, there are other issues that God talks about. Uh, your welfare of the nation, your safety, all the things, your children, how they're going to be protected. But today we're talking about the reason why we can't get out of our financial problems today is basically because of the issues of health and the federal support to the welfare recipients who cannot take care of themselves or won't take care of themselves. Verse 15. However, if you do not obey the Lord your God and do not carefully follow all His commands and decrees that I'm giving you today, all of these curses will come upon you and overtake you. You will be cursed in the city and cursed in the country. Your basket and your kneading trough will be cursed. So in other words, the food we eat, even though we have food, it's going to be cursed. And we look at the food we here today and there's all kinds of diseases. There's this kind of pestilence in the food. We have the warnings and the recalls all the time. The food we eat no longer has the nourishment because we've, we've ruined the soil in which we've grown or we've grown seeds that, that have been uh, pollinated artificially and don't produce the same health and results that they did naturally if we, when we followed God's law of, of planting. Plant the land for six years and let it rest on the seventh year. It says, and the fruit of your womb. How about the sicknesses and illness of children being born? Cancer and all the problems that we're facing today that you see with, with illnesses that's in the children that's going on. They will be cursed in the crops of your land, and the calves of your herd, and the lambs of your flocks. So even our animals wouldn't, are not producing the healthy things that we need. Verse 21, and the Lord will plague you with diseases. Never in modern times have there been more diseases plaguing a nation than we're seeing in America today. Now, you can look at the other countries where they don't even have the health care. And, of course, there are diseases and pestilence that take place. But in the nation that has the doctors, the hospitals, the medical equipment, there should be no reason that we're facing what we're facing here in the nation today. With diseases, and listen, here's what he says, until he has destroyed you from the land that you're going in to possess. So here we are in the land. And because we have disobeyed God, that these diseases now are destroying us from the very land that we're in. And we're bankrupting ourselves just trying to stay on top of these issues. Verse 22, the Lord will strike you with wasting disease. We have, we have cancers. And you have the, uh, I mean, there's just, just in, an infinite number of diseases that just seem to be overtaking us. Fever and inflammation. The Lord will afflict, afflict you with the balls of Egypt and tumors and festering sores and itch, which cannot be cured. So we're going to have sicknesses and diseases of various types that will come into the nation itself. It says, and you're not going to get rid of them. And how often have people gone to the doctor and they give them a treatment for something to try to keep it in check to say that once you got it, you've got it forever. You can't get rid of it. And God says, because you disobey me, that's what's going to happen to you. And the Lord will afflict you with madness and blindness and confusion of mind. We're seeing now, even into our youth, the health, mental health issues are just destroying the people. The... the uh, Today, the children uh, living in the uh, suicide rate that just continues to escalate throughout our nation. So we're beginning to see all these things that God warned the nation that if you do these things, this is going to happen to you. And that's where we're at today. We are at that stage where God says that if we're, he's going to just remove us from our own land, that we're just being destroyed from within through the disobedience to God. And this nation doesn't want to talk about that. Now, I'm going to go back to the clock and I'm going to show you how much of this issue here is involved with health and showing how it's bringing us down financially. 
So now, when I go to this chart, I zoomed in, I brought it up, the little, the little quadrant that I had here, I zoomed it in and I brought it up. So now I got, on this chart, I've got some, some, uh, some uh, circles I'm going to pull in so that you can see what I'm talking about in this chart. Down in the bottom, in the middle, you have Medicare enrollees and Medicaid. Talking about, now, now Medicare is, is normal, a person who's retired, they're on Social Security, and you move into those roles, and that's a system that was designed to help a person as they get older. Money they actually put into the Medicare roles that they've paid for all their life comes back to them with the insurances to help them in their older ages. But the, char but the chart on the bottom, Medicaid recipients, those are people now who are not of age, who's actually retired. Those are government-supported people who do not have their own insurance, and they are on Medicaid that government's paying for. 73 million people are on Medicaid. 73 million now on Medicaid. That's government-subsidized. In addition to that, because maybe they have health issues, or they just... Whatever they're doing out there, I mean, that's, uh, I won't get into it, but there is a lot of fraud. There's absolutely a lot of fraud out there with Medicaid. Nearly half of all Americans, 162 million, almost 163 million people now are receiving government benefits. All right, government benefits here. 43 million people who are not only on Medicaid, say so they can't even work most of the time or their income's so low, they're getting food stamps to live on. So uh, the, all the money that goes out is continuing to support the issues, primarily brought about through the disobedience to God and health issues. Now, here we are. When the, this is what the government's been telling us, how great a shape we're in. 40, almost 43 million people are living in poverty now. Almost 43 million people. This is unbelievable. It's a number that's unfathomable in the nation where we have, where they're telling us there's only 4.6% unemployment now, which is, which is another area I'm not even going to get in today. So now, going on, in this past year, in the economy we're going through, which drives people into the Medicaid uh, and uh, food stamps and welfare, in this one year, 890,000 people have filed bankruptcy. And almost 520,000 people have gone into foreclosure and lost their homes. Now, does that sound like how well we're doing financially? These figures are from the government themselves. And these things are going to begin to come out now in the news that should have been brought out for the last eight years. And you've not been told that and that you've been lied to. Manufacturing is a big issue in America. And part of the reason that we're having problems with the issues of health is that the manufacturing has gone overseas and we're importing things now that are not good for our health, that we have no way to know at the food if it's been really treated chemically or what's going on with it. But quite often you'll find food has been contaminated, has been brought into America and gone right past the, uh, the federal government in their, their concern of protecting our nation. It's been going unchecked and bringing in more sickness and disease. Part of the reason that we have the financial problem is in the manufacturing jobs. Let me show you something here. In 2000, the bottom chart, you see, we had 17 million jobs in manufacturing. 16 years later, we have lost 5 million of those jobs. Now, manufacturing is, is critical. It's the loss of production. So what this chart is telling you, whether you realize it or not, is that it's showing you that you in this nation have become a consuming nation rather than a producing nation. That principle alone breaks down the very foundation of God's law. God says if you're not producing, you're going to be cursed. And because we are not producing as a nation, we're beginning to consume, we're paying the price of the fruits of which we're consuming. And quite often, they evolve health. So now, that's another issue we're going to cover later in, <clears throat> excuse me, in God's unchanging word, because we must produce. All right? And there's, there's parables that God talks about this, these issues. The last thing I want to show you here is very important on this chart. The median income, all right? The median income on the left of those two boxes, the median income in 2000 was $29,456. 
16 years later, the median income had grown by about $1,000. So the average family worker is making $1,000 more than they did back in 2000, in 16 years. That means you've lost ground with inflation, with everything else that's rising. But now take a look at the charts next to them. Same box, look at the charts right next to them. In 2000, the price of a home was an average median home was $168,000. Look at the price of the average home today, $307,000. The cost of a home has nearly doubled in the last 16 years. While the, while the salary has been stagnant and hasn't raised, while, while the cost of health care has risen astronomically in the same 16 years, the amount of money that you have to be able to get what you need has dwindled to nothing. And that's why the American people today have been struggling beyond measure. While the government and the news media continues to lie to the public of how well things are. You're about to begin to see how, how close and how tight things are and how fast things can deteriorate and escalate in this nation. Now, this is just the beginning. In God's unchanging word, I'm going to cover a lot more of these issues. Because what happens when people do this? They have less money. So what do they do? They buy inexpensive products to consume. So they begin consuming more junk foods, more waste foods. And it continues to increase the health issues. So we continue to see the escalation of problems because we haven't been obedient to God. Where do we go from here? We're going to talk more about that. I have, I have uh, one more thing I want to bring to you before I actually close out. This was the last, this was uh, an insert that I brought in as we were about to bring this to a close because we want to cover a lot of these issues. And in case you haven't got one yet, you can go to the website. This is the latest quarterly. And this is, we, we're focusing on issues that are in America. We talk about the 45th president. What could it mean for the elect? We're talking about the constitutional Christian that's in this issue. And we're talking about why we want to outreach to warn this nation. And some of the things I talked to you about today that involved health, those issues are important that, the, that this nation is not talking about. And we're also into a series that's on the back cover that you can actually go on the website. So if you would, go to the website, and in the middle of the page it says newsletters. Just click on that, and you can literally download this quarterly. So the reason I'm bringing this out at the last minute is this. If we don't speak up now, it will be too late to have this nation re return to God. So what we're trying to do on God's Unchanged Word, and we're asking for your help, spread the word. It's time now to spread the word that the nation and the climate is changing to give us a little bit of freedom. And if Donald Trump will put in the conservative uh, Supreme Court judge, as he said he would, so I believe that he will, that God will give us more time to create that warning for this nation. And if we don't do that, as you've seen some from the figures we're in, there is no way that we're going to financially get out of the mess that we're in. It can't be done, no matter who is running our nation. It's going, to take, it's going to take a revival and a repentance to God. And that's just one area of the aspect. And when that begins to deteriorate in the United States, you're going to see the escalation and the problems around the globe. And we're beginning to get a tint of that going on right now. So anyway, thank you for tuning in today to God's Unchanging Word for News Nuggets and Insights. Please tell your friends about this. Share it when you get the email. Just forward it to everybody you know, and hopefully they'll watch it too. And until next week, thank you for watching God's Unchanging Word for News Nuggets and Insights.